dun 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 all right trigger warning we're going to be talking about Ezrati and Ezratica and uh That'll be triggering for some people because if you're a longtime Ezra user, you have emotional damage. You just do. I've got it myself. I've been using Ezrati for hundreds of years. Started out in college. I've written unspeakable things in the Arc Macro language. I wrote something in Avenue once that worked. I uh, tried to deploy ArcStorm and I lived to tell the tale. Barely. So I've got that emotional damage. You have that emotional damage. A little triggering. But a lot of us are also as rowdy users. It's hard not to be in a lot of our spaces that we work in. And I don't hate it. I don't hate as rowdy. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. It's just a tool. Sometimes it's the right tool. Sometimes it's the wrong tool. My only real complaint about as rowdy is that for the expense of the software, it's just not very high quality. And that just comes with being a monopoly. Whenever you have a monopoly in, in any sector, you end up with very expensive stuff that isn't super good because that's just what monopolies produce. So that's my only complaint about them. Other than that, they're fine. Sometimes it's the right tool for your job. Sometimes it's not. But if you're an Israeli user and you've got, uh, you want to build something and you want to build it using, say, MapLibre or some open source tools, but still using some of their ArcGIS Online infrastructure. You can totally do that. And you probably want to. I don't know if you've ever taken a good look at what the average ArcGIS Online map viewer looks like from a user perspective, but oh my, oh my, it's bad. It's so bad. This is just a plain old, just the, the Hello World map. 7.5 megabytes down, 37 megabytes of resources. That is, that is so abusive to your users, there should be a hotline you can call to report something like this, like, hello, I tried to open this government website, NarcJS Online, it went through my whole monthly data cap in two minutes, my device caught fire, send help. There should be a hotline for something this abusive to users. So say you don't want to make that, you want to do your own lightweight, very custom map libre kind of thing, but you don't want to have to reinvent the whole base tile server wheel. If you do use Martin, it's awesome. And it's not very hard. So as you want to use Esri base maps, you can totally do that with map libre. Map libre and ArcGIS Online vector tiles have the same root source in the past in Mapbox. If you didn't know, Esri's vector tile stuff is all forked from an open source project. Now you may stop and wonder, why am I paying so much for this stuff that was you know free and open source? Well, wonder that on your own time. We've got we've got things to do here. So Esri, to their credit, has a really good tutorial on using MapLibre GL. JS with the ArcGIS Online vector tiles. So we're going to go through that. So it's, I'll link to all the stuff, but here's where the tutorial is. And basically you're going to need an ArcGIS Online login, which you can get for free. And then from there you can go into your, uh, your developer dashboard, which you can have a link to here and create an API key. We'll go to our dashboard, kind of looks like this. Go to manage all API keys. We'll create a new one and just call it kill me because that's what I do. And it's something I want to kill eventually, even though this will still be here 10 years from now. It's going to create an API key, which is just a big long string that identifies you. And you can set default services by default, or the services that the API key can access, uh, by default, base maps is included, and that's all we need, so we're good. Let's go ahead and set up a, a MapLibre map and consume some vector tiles. So let's create a new Vite project, because that's my jam. Uh, Bunx, create Vite latest. Uh, Bun is a... Uh, server-side JavaScript 
engine, kind of like Node, only it's kind of smaller and faster and cool and new, so I'm playing around with it. But you can just do npm and add Node commands for this. Looks basically the same. Right, create Vita latest. Let's give it a test as Roddy. Yeah, it's good. Vanilla JavaScript is fine. TypeScript can eat it. And we'll go into test as Roddy. We'll go bun install. npm install if you're using Node. And we'll and we'll put map libre in there as well. Let's just open up a code window here. And we'll open up our terminal. And we're just gonna go bun run dev. See how fast that is? But I mean it's not like node is slow. Unless you're coming from like Rust Go Land, in which case, yeah, node is slow. But bun is bun is nuts. So we've got our hello world Vite app. We're counting stuff, which is really all we want to do in the end of the day is just count stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and make a map liberate map in here. We're going to put in a new div to catch our map. Div pound map. We need to go up into our styles and we can basically get rid of all this stuff and just make sure our body goes the whole page. Set the margin to zero. And then take our map and set a width of 100 dynamic view width. So my new favorite unit of the day and a height of 100 dynamic view height. The difference between dynamic view height and width and regular view height and width is that if you have some browser elements that will appear to change the size of the viewport, like on a mobile device, if you scroll up your address bar shows up, It'll take that into consideration. That's all that does. So now we got a big lot of nothing. We need to fix that too. Let's get rid of everything except for that style import. And I have a little map libre GL snippet we can use. And now we have a raster open street map tile thing. So all this did is imported the map libre GL JavaScript and CSS made a simple map style with just the OpenStreetMap raster tiles, and then it just drew it to my area of uh, purgatory slash interest, the Charlotte region. Okay, let's consume some ArcGIS Online vector tiles. And it's really easy. And give credit to Azrati for putting these directions here because they didn't have to, and they, they did it anyway. So it's got our API key. So we're going to need, we're going to set a couple variables here, one for our API key. We can get rid of this map style now. And holy indention, Batman. Our API key will go back to our dashboard to Mr. Kill Me. We'll just copy that and we'll put it right there. Hello, long string. Now for our, go back to our map libre directions. This is the URL we want to use with that stuff. We're just gonna do this as a template string. And what it's doing, this base map enum, that just basically means a hey, which, which vector base map do you want? And we're gonna get RGS straights and it's going to put that API key as this token at the end. That's all that's doing. So we'll go back to our map. And this is Esri Vector Tiles. Neat, neat-ish. Very straightforward and easy. We have Vector Tiles from Ezrati. Let's, they have a lot of different styles you can pick from. If you go back to this documentation and go to this change the base map style version two, It'll have this little bit of select code. Outdoor, community, navigation, streets relief. 
Let's go with Streets Relief. If you scroll down here, you'll see what that base map enum should be set to for that stuff. So this is Streets Relief. Let's grab that and we'll trade it out for this ArcGIS Streets. And go back to our map so we can see this change live. Now we have, where it's just kind of green blobs, we have actual terrain looking stuff. It is not 3D. Two things I've noticed with the Esri vector tile base maps, which I think all relate back to their libraries. Uh, when Esri forked map box, by the way, if you didn't know this, all of Esri's vector tile stuff is a fork of an open source project. And because Mapbox was open source at one time, they forked it. I think when they forked it, Mapbox did not have 3D stuff in their JavaScript library yet. And I think Esri, I'm just speculating that they haven't hired the right people. They probably took their fork and they did a bunch of stuff to it. And then Mapbox and Mac Libre got 3D stuff and they don't know how to go back and take their library and add that to it. And that's why on a regular map on ArcGIS Online, you can't pitch it. It has no 3D at all. You have to use a whole separate scene viewer from that. My theory is that's why that is, why they haven't built that in. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna fix that in here. So we've got our base map here, and it looks fine if you're sharing parcels with the Esri. You'll actually get parcel lines. Maybe not on this particular on some of their base maps I'll actually get parcel lines in the Charlotte area which is kind of neat those have to be coming from us because we are we're the ones that do the parcel line but there's a lot of different stuff it's generally speaking very good quality visualization I mean they they've got some good uh, cartographers working there suppose you want to change this style quite a bit well you can do that if you look at the network requests when this come in, one of these is going to be the style file. It'll be up near the top and it'll be like uh, the streets relief token something something somewhere you pass it the token. That is your map style. This is the map box map style spec JSON file. And they do some nasty stuff with it, like they put the sources at the bottom <laughs> and the versions somewhere <laughs> toward the bottom and the glyphs at the, I, maybe this, uh, now I think about it, maybe it's alphabetical. Anyway, they organize this file really weird. But what happens when you send that API key is it just tacks that onto your request. So if you look at the end of the glyphs, you'll see that API key. Uh, let's see if I can make this a little bigger for you. You'll see glyphs, you'll see that API key. If you look down at the tile URL and the sprite URL, it just adds that API key. Because if you don't pass that API key from outside ArcGIS Online, it just won't give it to you. So we can take this whole thing, we're going to control all, copy, let's make a new file. We'll call it as JSON, and we're just going to paste that in there. It's a mere 11,000 lines of, we're, we're not going to think about that. We're just going to hit save, go to main.js, let's import that. We'll go import Ezrati style from dot slash Ezrati.json. And then where we make the style request, we're just going to put in uh, is ruddy style and that works perfectly fine so now we have this the style file locally rather than getting it from the server so now we can mess it with it to our hearts content let's make this actual 3d terrain let's grab a let's see where do I have that file copy oh I've done this I've gotten this file before I see <laughs> This is like my uh, open map tile spec uh, style sheet. So let's put in this terrain source. And this is coming from stuff that uh, uh, 
some company put in Amazon whose name I should know. They do the really cool visual development seed, maybe? I don't know. But thank you, whoever you were. You're awesome. We'll go to Azrati. We'll go down to the sources, which are at the bottom, because for bad reasons. And that is, that is what it is. It's alphabetical. There's Sprite, and then there's version. It's organized alphabetically. That's 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 precious. So there's our terrain source. And we'll add to our layers, actually not to our layers, just to our base uh, stuff, the actual terrain. So we'll go, I guess we can put that anywhere since it's all, it's all weird placed. So right now, if we go over to say some mountainy stuff and, uh, and get in there and pitch, we see this is just <clears throat> it's Pancake City. Now let's save this. Actually, let's let's exaggerate the train a bit so we can really see. And now we can go over to some mountainy place and pitch it and see we have actual 3D tile. Again, my theory is that Esri just doesn't have this capability in their library and kind of people they need to hire to put that in the library are expensive. That would be my guess is why they don't have this in their default map viewer. Now we got pretty 3D terrain. Another thing I noticed in Esri base tiles is that the buildings have no heights. So you can't, you know, pitch and see like what your downtown skyline looks like because they, they have no heights. And again, I think I'm just speculating, but I, I think they just don't know how to do that. Anyway, that is adding ArcGIS Online vector tiles to your map, Libre map. Now I could take this, this app I'm building and build something super cool and useful and small and not whatever the hell that is. Because that, there should be a hotline for that. Yeah, I hope you found that useful. And if you're an Ezrati longtime user, uh, please see a therapist for the emotional damage and I will catch you later. Bye-bye.